Autonomous cleaning is evolving, and it's solving real challenges in facilities. The latest generation of robotic floor scrubbers are impressive, combining smart navigation with extended run times and serious cleaning power. These machines aren't just flashy tech. They're practical tools designed to boost efficiency, ease the burden on cleaning teams, and keep facilities looking their best all day long. It's my pleasure to welcome two pros from Tenant, Reed and Tom. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. We are taping this on a Monday morning. The week will get better, I promise. Let's do this. Quick introductions. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Tenant. And Reed, let's start with you. Sure. So I am the Senior Technical Product Manager for Robotics at Tenant Company. I have over 30 years of cleaning experience from technical background in chemistry, floor coatings, and cleaning products, and now working strictly on robotics within Tenant. Yeah, I'm a uh, Industrial Strategic Account Manager, specifically for industrial robotics, helping drive our team to help adopt customers with uh, different robotic solutions, specifically in the industrial market. I've been with Tenant for about 13 years, and I've been focusing on robotics over the past four. Speaking of robotics, that's why we're here today to talk about the Tenant X6 Rover, and that's an impressive machine. I know you're both you're both proud of that. Tom, let's start with you on this. Let's dig into what this means for the industry. Tell us about the Tenant X6 Rover, what it is, and what it does. Yeah, I appreciate it. The, the X6 is uh, really a special machine to us. It's our second purpose-built robot, uh, the bigger brother to the recently released X4 Rover. Uh, but we're continuing to make some serious improvements um, and upgrades to the unit, uh, leveraging things like an enhanced uh, AI and also things like docking to drive uh, more productivity for the customers, uh, more hands-off, fully autonomous approach and allowing them to be freed up to focus on higher value tasks, uh, but while still focusing on tenants core important part of the business, which is cleaning floors. So being able to be durable, reliable, and easy to work with for our customers. Reed, do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, some great key points, and I think we're gonna you know, talk a little bit more about and expanding that here in the, the next few topics. Well, with that, let's stick with you on this question. Talk about the specific challenges, Reed, in floor care that the X6 Rover aims to solve for facility managers. Yeah, so the, the X6 is uniquely designed um, to work and reduce that need for the human operator or human assistance. And really robotics in general really uh, frees up that labor need for customers, which we're you know, seeing across our industry, whether it is commercial, retail, industrial, finding somebody to help clean the floor, which is really important to help maintain that indoor health quality aspect, um, make sure that we have safe environments, and then just being able to do their job. And Tom, anything to add to that? Yeah, you know, I think uh, one of the biggest challenges in the industry is uh, finding uh, repeatable quality work. So um, being able to make sure the task gets done correctly every single time. Um, and that sometimes people have issues come up and they can't make it to work. The robot's gonna be there every single time. It's gonna do the job the exact same way every single time. And it's gonna be consistent and repeatable, which allows us and our customers to rely on it. Appreciate that. Tom, let's stick with you on this. Let's talk about the different types of facilities that uh, your product, your innovation will help. Let's focus on the industrial component of this. Can you walk us through a typical cleaning cycle and highlight what makes it more efficient than traditional methods? Yeah, absolutely. The beautiful thing with the X6 Rover uh, added with the XC1 charge dock station is that it really allows us to have long periods of autonomous runtime for our customers. So an operator might come in uh, and the robot has already been cleaning for up to four hours continuously. So it could be running from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning and automatically go back at that point and dock itself and charge. And then once an operator would come in, they would do a dump and fill cycle, uh, check the machine, make sure everything's good to go. And then the machine can be back out cleaning for another full four hours of autonomous runtime. 
So we're looking at one manual interaction over the course of an entire shift, which really frees up the labor to focus on those important tasks. And Reed, I know you focus your work on the commercial sector. Can you talk about some of the same points, but in that application? Yeah, so really in the commercial aspect, um, I'll focus on the, the ease of maintenance or the ease of use of the machine. So uh, typical cleaning cycle, if we're starting off with a clean machine, um, solution tank is full, recovery tank is empty, good brushes, good squeegees, uh, being able to run that machine in the commercial environments and making sure that um, it's easy to use from an operator perspective of sort of hit and play, hit and play on the robot going and then coming back and the routes are done, right? So opening the operators to then multitask in other areas of cleaning restrooms, uh, maintaining something else, dusting, cleaning windows, really freeing that labor that they're struggling, like Tom mentioned before of, uh, you know, showing up every single day or they're just on a, a route schedule if you're a BSC, for example, um, making sure and freeing up that labor. I think every single person has seen a, a robotic floor machine somewhere in their lives and it's impressive and amazing when they just run around doing their thing. I know you put a lot of work into it, a lot of work into the technology. But what matters is how it works and does it do the job right? So, Tom, let's stick with you on this and talk about the features that make up this innovation. I know a lot of time was spent in research and development, but talk about how it enhances cleaning performance beyond yeah. the human element, maybe, in real world environments. And talk about the ROI on that, too. Sure. So, you know, when we first think about this, the machine needs to be effective, right? First thing it needs to do is be able to clean the floor properly and safely, but then we start to add some of the cool technology um, that's enhancing quickly into the equation. Things like uh, enhanced AI uh, using neural nets that allow us to do uh, some pretty special things like uh, be able to understand and see a person and then behave differently, or maybe see some type of debris on the floor and decide, make a decision uh, through machine learning to avoid that or to pick it up. Um, all that kind of compounds with the robot to make better decisions and be more consistent and reliable uh, as it goes around shoppers or, or workers in a kind of manufacturing site. Um, it all kind of ties together nicely. And then just in terms of the, the piece of ROI, we, we like to say a business use case because besides the financial benefits, there's a lot of other soft benefits um, that go into that in terms of safety and productivity. Um, but typically, you know, if you can help free up someone's labor for say a, a full shift, uh, that's 40 hours a week. Um, that is a, a large amount of labor cost that can be reallocated to things that are more important to the employees or to someone shopping in a facility or maybe in a hospital, making sure that they're passing the tests and um, audits for their, their sites. And I believe you touched on this, but this machine can run for hours. Correct. Let's talk about recharging it because that has to happen. It's got batteries. Isn't there something optional that makes it easier? Can you talk about that? Thinking about large facilities, airports, hospitals, warehouses. Yeah, you know, as we uh, start to figure out ways to help our customers be more productive with their time, the uh, XC1 charging dock station has really become a, a big key component to this uh, across all the different industries. It allows us to enable things like when operators maybe forget to plug the machine at the end of the day and now the whole second shift or the next day uh, is faced with challenges, uh, we eliminate that for the customer. But ultimately, we free up the ability to be significantly more productive. It allows us to schedule tasks, uh, enables to set the robot out autonomously by itself. Uh, so if somebody forgets to do their, their task or their job, it can be uh, resolved by a manager or supervisor. And again, that leads to better and more consistent results uh, for the site. And one of the biggest keys to that uh, we've seen in this industry, and I think why robotics has really taken such a stronghold is uh, data-driven uh, decisions. So we're able to use a lot of data uh, to make better decisions on how we're maintaining our facilities. So instead of the operator cleaning the same space you know, six times throughout the course of a couple of days, they can actually see exactly what's been done uh, what has not been done, and then they can make more educated decisions to uh, make sure the facility is cleaner. 
So how does that data transfer to the user to give them that information? Yeah, so a couple of different ways that we provide data is um, through weekly reports or re reporting to managers, supervisors, um, which is a use report. We also have um, our tenant robotics app where you can view the data on, on your app. You can um, have the machine do various tasks as well. You have training videos available to you. Um, really making sure and driving that use of the machine and making it, again, it easier. But as Tom mentioned, uh, it's difficult to know whether or not the, the machine is being used or not. Typically, we would say, oh, what does the hour meter on the machine uh, say to determine are the tasks being done, right? Um, just sort of an old school way of saying, and you know, before we even had hour meters on machines, it was sort of a guess. Um, now, all of a sudden, we can actually have the data on that machine of what it does, we can have the map of actually what locations and what routes were actually trained, cleaned, and then actually run. Um, just again, providing a better proof of clean or uh, proof of performance. Good to hear. And uh, the app aspect, I like that. Being able to see the data and use it at any time. You know, I wanna talk about this question because some watching this program, they might be impressed with the X6 Rover, but they also might say, um, I'm hesitant to adopt this to my facility. Maybe it's, they think it's too expensive. They think the challenges are too hot, great, the training, whatever it is. What would you say to those who are hesitant to jump in and embrace autonomous cleaning? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a big shift for the industry uh, to make a jump to robotics or, or autonomy. And I you know first I would say talk to somebody that's done it already. You know, find out we've got plenty of customers that have gone down the journey, and they can explain exactly why it makes sense and all the benefits you get out of it. Um, and then just understanding how it can benefit the facility. You know, reach out to tenant and and see one for yourself. Have a local account manager bring one out to your facility. Let it run around. Understand what the benefits are for the facility. Just besides labor, labor is. Reed said it's just one small part of it. And the more you can see it and understand how it can impact the business, uh, it ultimately becomes almost a no-brainer. And Reed, do you at times hear the same question that, that I'm just not sure if I should? Yeah. Um, as Tom mentioned, we have multiple different customers in different areas of industrial, retail, healthcare, education. Um, a lot of the customers are very happy uh, within their industry to share their story. Um, so, you know, you have these champions and these leaders in different groups and associations um, within the cleaning industry, I to say, being one of them uh, that really like to be the champion or like to share their opportunities because their peers are going through the same struggles that they were going through. So uh, they understand from an education perspective of what they're going through and say, hey, robotics did this for me. Um, or, hey, when you talk to robotics, make sure it does this or this. Make sure you're asking the manufacturers, do they have uh, this kind of support? Do they, um, how are they going to service the machine when the machine um, breaks down or you need support? Okay, uh, my last question is an observation and then a question. So I've been, I travel a lot. I've been in a lot of big airports, big buildings, and I've seen these these uh, floor scrubbing machines being pushed around by people or they're riding on it. I'm not sure if those people, those, those great workers are even awake because it's gotta be monotonous <laughs> and uh, like driving a car forever, right? You're just, yeah. you're back and forth, back and forth. My question in today's world of tech, does it even make sense to have people doing that type of work when the, your machines will do it and they could do something else? When you see this yourself, when you travel and you see these buildings, what are you thinking? And Tom, let's start with you. Yeah, you know, uh, I was just in an airport last week and ran into a, a team of guys late at night uh, getting ready to actually prep their robots and got to talk to them and heard a, a great story, you know, how much it frees them up. They've got too much square footage to cover in their normal shift, but the robots, I think they've cleaned 235 million square feet with their, with their fleet of robots, right? Um, so that allows them to get off the monotonous task and focus on high touch things like glass cleaning or the bathrooms or areas that the customers of the airport really focus on and see the most. So 
are there places where someone still would need to push a floor scrub around? Sure. Uh, very tight applications. There, there's, there's ones out there, but uh, I would question, you know, why not robotics, right? Start with that. And I guarantee there's a really good use case across almost every facility. If you really look at it and tenant offers besides the X6 Rover, a variety of five different robotic platforms that all have different use cases and can all provide a lot of value to the customer. If they're in the middle of a you know, three year, for example, bid, I can understand why they're still pushing around equipment because uh, you know, not flipping over to ro robotics midway through their contract. There's one thing I have never seen and that's a robotic machine tumbling down the escalator. So I know <laughs> that they're very safe. And there's that aspect that. as well. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's another thing too, is to bring up the safety piece of it. Um, you know, one, it's important that people feel safe around our robots. So there's a lot of certifications out there now that exist that ensure that the machines are safe uh, to be operating in and around people and shoppers and employees. And uh, that's something that Tenant takes very seriously. And the X6 Rover uh, goes above and beyond to make sure we do that for the customer. And uh, everyone should feel really comfortable seeing these machines out there. I know you already talked about the demonstrations people can get when they want to look at this innovation. Let's wrap up with this. For those who are watching and want to learn more, where can they go online to find more information? And how do they set up that demonstration or learn more in person? Can you talk about that to wrap up? Yeah, a couple of different ways. You know, uh, if you go to our website, tenantco.com robotics, it will land them on our robotics page that will start to let them understand and educate themselves on all of our different platforms. But I would highly recommend reaching out uh, on our website or calling and finding out to which is your local representative, which tenant has an army of all across the country. And uh, they are all extremely knowledgeable in robotics and also manual equipment. So they can come in and be the expert for you and make sure they guide you in the right direction uh, to make a good educated decision for your business. And um, we can get a machine out there and you guys can see what it can do. Tom made a really good point of bringing the machine out to your environment so that you can sort of see and get all of the decision makers or the people who are interested in the robotics there. So. Uh, it's really good to get buy-in from the different areas of safety, of you know, of the operations perspective, but also from the you know people who are doing the cleaning now to understand like, hey, this is not replacing you. This is to enhance your productivity or to allow you um, some of the struggles that they are currently having and freeing up or you know something to help them. Well, thank you both for this great information. The X6 Rover needs to be looked at by everyone who has a facility that needs their floors cleaned using the technology available today. See you at ISSA show. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it.